Hey everyone, this is Ivan from Yellowfin, and in this video, I'll present some of the key highlights from the 9.3 release. In this release, broadcasting is now available for dashboards and presentations. Just like reports, you can now enable scheduled delivery of dashboards and presentations to different audiences. Let's have a look at an existing broadcast for this dashboard. The setup process is exactly the same as the one you'd go through at the report level. Here, you can set the subject line, description, broadcasting output, whether it's a link or in PDF, the types of filter values to use for broadcasts, and the frequency. As part of this enhancement, we have also included additional options for schedules, making it more granular for specific frequencies. For example, for fortnightly broadcasts, I can now set the delivery to be on the second Monday or for monthly broadcasts to have the delivery happen on the fifth day of every month. That's just a few examples. The menu here will change according to your initial frequency selection. We have also modified the dashboard menu to appear as a clickable dropdown rather than to have it appear on a mouse hover. This is to help eliminate accidental clicks when switching between different dashboards. Export to PDF has been reintroduced for dashboards in this release. As part of this, PDF generation has been improved to support both canvas and preset layouts. In 9.3, a full pixel-perfect rendering of the dashboard also includes visual representations for JavaScript charts and code mode objects. And like all dashboard functionality, administrators can also enable or disable access to these capabilities via all functions. For dashboard designers, we have refreshed text widgets to make text formatting much easier and intuitive. In 9.3, the first click will keep the focus on the text widget, as shown by the blue outline highlighting it. Clicking away on the property panels will not remove the focus, even if you click into this box to type in a new font size. Keyboard shortcuts for bold, underline, and italics are also now supported. And the second click will now bold the blue outline around the text widget and show a blinking cursor, letting you know that you're now in active typing mode. Image widgets have also been enhanced in this release. Let's have a look. We have greatly improved the search performance when you're looking for a specific image in the image library. Additionally, uploaded images are now automatically cropped for you and will insert itself onto the dashboard. And let's resize this and simply place that over here. Now, if I want to replace this image with a different one, you can now simply right click on it and select replace image. Select a new image and a previous one gets replaced inline. You no longer need to drag and drop new images and reposition them. And if you look at the panel on the right, the new image also retains the properties of the previous image. As part of this enhancement, a brand new image manager is now available. Besides the search bar, you can now sort images by alphabetical order and by the most or least recent. Once you've selected the image you want, just click on Insert into Canvas and it will appear on the dashboard immediately. There are also new categories to make searching much easier. You can now look through all images, images that you've personally uploaded, or ones that have been recently uploaded by all users into the platform. 9.3 also introduces the concept of corporate images. These are images on production content that cannot be modified or deleted unless you have the right access to do so. This access is managed within the user's role functions. For the data discovery product, you can now apply left or right alignment to numeric display charts. Before we show you how, let's have a look at this example and see why constantly centered KPIs could be an issue in some scenarios. Here you can see the text widgets and numeric display charts are aligned. But if I look at whiskeys under this filter, you'll find that the updated order value no longer aligns. That's because the value has changed from a much shorter 1.9 million to a much longer 867,000. In 9.3, we've added new alignment options for charts like these to help you avoid this issue. Upon setting it as left or right aligned, the chart itself will also move to that position. 
This is useful when you have multiple numeric display charts and want to quickly understand how each of them are aligned. With this enhancement, you can be assured that your design-led charts and dashboards are constantly aligned no matter how the values change. Let's take a look at this chart. It has a drill through where if you click on the whiskeys bar, it pulls up a detailed report for the top sellers. In 9.3, we have added a new option to drill on hard-coded filters for drill throughs. For example, this parent report here has hard-coded dates and account name filters. In the drill through panel, you can now choose to include any of these hard-coded filters and I'll include account name in this scenario and pass them to the child report as part of the drill through. This makes the process much more flexible in this example as you no longer need to have the account name as a user prompt filter or a report column in order to use it for drill throughs. For tabular reports, totals and subtotals can now be set to appear at the start of the report. This is useful for very large column or row reports where the user has to scroll either to the bottom or to the right to view the totals. This new option now moves the totals to the start of the report, at the top for column reports and to the left for row reports. We have also introduced image link formatter to instantly display images within your Tableau reports. Previously, report authors needed to provide additional HTML to wrap around URLs in a calculator field and apply an HTML formatter. In this release, all you need to do is select the image link formatter and apply them on your columns containing image URLs. This new formatter allows you to select image width and height, as well as the default image to display if your values are blank or null. Not only does this instantly display the images inline, it also performs smart caching for report performance. Last but not least, text widget replacements have been expanded to allow you to access any value within the Tableau report and use them to build dynamic narratives for your charts. For example, if you want to quickly summarize your charts by providing key points in a dynamic narrative, you can utilize the new table value parameter to do just that. Let's have a look at this example. In my narrative, I want to inform the user what the most popular product style is and what its yearly sales revenue is. As this report is sorted by sales amount, I'm going to pick the first row, the third column for the style and the fourth column for the revenue. Now when the report changes, so do the values in the narrative. As part of this enhancement, the formatters applied on columns are also shown when using table value. That means you can actually show the bottle images from this report and include them as part of the text narrative. Say I want to display the top three brands and show the bottle images for each. To do that, I can just use table value and refer to the first column and the first row, followed by the second row value and the third row value for all three brands. That gives me the top three brands in my narrative for whichever product category I choose. Using this new enhancement, you can now add and edit customizable narratives that fit a specific audience, which refreshes every time the report updates. In the previous release, we introduced new REST API endpoints to allow developers to embed stories and signals into their host applications. In 9.3, we have also included endpoints for broadcast alerts. Product teams can now create their own custom UI to display broadcast alerts and decide what the journey should be around these notifications. We have also added a whole list of new endpoints to help automate the management of users, roles, data sources, licenses, and much more. So please check out the REST API section on the wiki to see what they are and how to utilize them. Assisted Insights is now supported for content embedded with JavaScript API. With this release, software companies and analytics app builders can now embed all of Yellowfin's AI capabilities into their host or turnkey applications. Drill Through is also now supported for embedded content. With this enhancement for JavaScript API, every single interactive dashboard feature is now accessible for embedded content. 
At the code level, developers can also toggle every UI interaction for reports. For example, this report here has a drill down. You can choose to disable the drill down simply by changing this value from true to false. This setting is available to all report interactions including all types of drills, chart brushing, series and unit selections, and date sliders. This is useful to not only help teams reuse reporting content for any scenario, but to also allow them to develop custom UI and use that to perform these interactions. In 9.3, new configuration options have been added to the admin console. For example, I have three languages set up in this instance. Administrators can now set regional, decimal, and thousand separators based on the specific language of your users. For US English, decimals are shown with a period and thousand separators with a comma. For certain regions like the ones you see here, decimals can be shown with a comma and thousand separators with a space. In 9.3, you can now set this in advance and depending on the user logged in, this user account has its primary language set to French, so Yellowfin will automatically format all values for dashboards and reports based on the language. And that's it for key highlights today. For all other enhancements and improvements in Yellowfin 9.3, you can check out our What's New page on our website and join the conversation in our community. Don't forget to check out our wiki, blog, and resources page for more information on the Yellowfin suite. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.